Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reinforce 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. CUBE's live coverage of AWS Amazon Web Services Reinforced, their inaugural conference around security here in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Dave, we've been talking about blockchain, it's been part of security, but no mention of it here. Amazon announced a blockchain intention, but it was more of a service model, less of a pure play infrastructure or kind of a new game changer. So we thought we would get our friends to come on the Cube and tell, tell us about it, Val Bercevici, uh, CEO and founder of Pencil Data, Cube alumni, formerly of NetApp, among other great companies, and Ed Yu, founder and CEO of Strong Salt. Welcome to theCUBE. Tell us, why aren't we talking about blockchain at a security conference <laughs> on cloud computing where there are all these resources, different paradigms, decentralized? What's your take? So for me, having been in this world for about 18, 24 months now, friction is one of the main reasons we're not seeing enterprise blockchain discussed here. In fact, at reInvent about six months ago, Andy Jassy mentioned that they finally understood AWS, the enterprise blockchain opportunity, and it was the integrity value minus the complexity. And they even announced a specific product, pre-announced as it turns yep. out, called QLDB Quantum Ledger Database. Should be available maybe by the time we have rolls around again this year. But it focuses specifically on the database interface on the cryptographic verifiability of transactions, minus the complexity of smart contracts and wallets and protocol maintenance and so forth. And coincidentally, or not so coincidentally, that's what Pencil Data does with our chain services. We are the ledger part of the quantum ledger database, the journal part as Amazon calls it. We can apply that cryptographic verifiability to any data store, whether it's a relational database, a document database, are you partnering with Amazon? We are hosted on Amazon. We don't have a formal okay. partnership yet. That's always the first way to start. I know. <laughs> the marketplace yeah. is something we're targeting. Many marketplaces get uh, AWS. And well, Amazon has two sort of versions, right? One for distributed uh, announced, use cases. They announced and, you know, uh, what I call a P2 offering. So managed, hyperledger, managed yeah. Ethereum. Everyone's had that. They're late to that game. But that's not a differentiator. Right. The innovation, once they actually yeah. ship it, Simplifying it down to something like QLDB without all of that you know, complexity about what's my governance model, what's my token economic model. These are things enterprises yeah. aren't up to speed on enough yet and they never want to decide. It's kind of like, do I need to know what my MTU size is on TCP IP? Not really for my business. I think Amazon wants to be that hardened top and, like you said, complexity. But the reality is that their, their, um, their world is um, targeting a new generation. And it's just our core theme of this show yeah. is the new generation of developers, the new generation of, Dave, Dave we just talked about this on our intro. I mean, I'm hardcore on this because it's just so obvious. I just can't get them behind myself if people don't figure this out quicker. The new developers are younger and, and older systems people. There's a range of, of ages doing it. They're, they're seeing the agility and it's a cultural shift, not just an age thing. Yeah. Ed, this, they're not here, right? This is the missing picture of this show and my criticism of reinforces big gaping hole around crypto and blockchain. Absolutely, because uh, in fact, um, I've been in the crypto area for like the last three, four years, and I actually know those people. I don't see any of them here, because cryptography is difficult, cryptocurrency is also difficult, and blockchain is very hard to, for people to understand how to use it. I think that's actually the basic piece for a lot of things. In fact, uh, one of the things we actually launched, Strong Vault, the app, it allows you to actually see the blockchain at your fingertips. So you can actually see how it works. It basically, just like what Bell said, it records everything you do to your data, so you always have a single source of truth. And I think that's something that people should understand here. Dave, I want to get your thoughts on this because you made a comment about security native um, being the theme here. And security native implying that DevOps, what they did for configuration, hardening the infrastructure's code, you have to consider this token economics business model side of it with, with the applications. A decentralized application is still an application, okay? Yeah. Blockchain is still an infrastructure dynamic. There's software involved. I mean, we're talking about the same thing. Is there a tr lost in translation in your opinion? Well, yeah, I think that, you know, to, to your point, Val, if you can abstract that complexity away, but the fundamentals of, 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 of cryptography and software engineering and game theory coming together, is what always has fascinated yeah. me yeah. about this, this space. And, and so, 
You're right. I think uh, uh, certainly enterprise customers don't want to, you know, they hear crypto, they go, oh no. Yeah. Although it's interesting, you know, I was just at a conference at IBM uh, yesterday. They talk a lot about blockchain. They don't talk about crypto. Yeah. You know, to me, they go together. But of course IBM, they don't like to talk a lot about job loss and automation. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but the reality is, it's there and, it's, and, it's, and it's, well, it has a lot of momentum, which is why you started a company around this. Yeah, we're actually seeing it all over right now. And again, our thing is around reducing, if not eliminating, the friction towards adopting blockchain. So less is more in our case. We're explicitly choosing not to do crypto wallets or currency transactions. It's, it's that Andy Jassy observation, the integrity value, the core integrity value for financial reconciliation, for detecting supply chain counterfeiting, for tracking assets and inventory across two-tier distribution, unifying multiple source, you know, systems of record into a shared state. Those are the right. kinds of applications we're seeing. Well, also, and also and Amazon, ag agriculture, like, and, and you know, there's so many different use cases, obviously, yeah, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, and Amazon likes to use that word, uh, well, words, raise the bar, which is you know, more functionality, but um, the other phrase is undifferentiated heavy lifting. There's a lot of details involved in some of those complexities exactly. that you're talking about that can be automated away. That's goodness, yeah. but you still have the you know, security problem of immutability, which is the, the beautiful thing about the blockchain. Uh, actually, uh, a lot of times people actually forgot to mention that one thing that blockchain allows you to do that's actually different from before was actually privacy. There's actually not just security, it's also privacy, which no actually is getting bigger and bigger, as we know. It's something that people feel very strongly about because it's something they feel personal about. And uh, that's something that, um, in fact, token economics encourages a lot of things that enables privacy that was not able to do before. Well, look at Facebook. Exactly. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, what do you guys think about the Facebook? So I, I'm one of the few, you know, I'm, I'm a public Facebook critic. I think they've done an atrocious job on the privacy front so far in protecting our data. On the other hand, if, you know, it's kind of like the Mueller report. If you actually read Facebook's white paper, it's a, and it's an, not a launch, it's an announcement, it's a technical right. announcement. It's a well-written design so Definitely. far. And it's, Facebook doesn't completely control it. They do have a vision for programmability. They're evolving it from being a permissions to ultimately a permissionless system. Them. So on paper, I like what I read, and I think it will start to you know, popularize and democratize the notion of crypto amongst the broader population. I'm, I'm going to take a much more wait well, and see approach I'm, than just you know. First of all, I, it I love, always love Facebook. Um, I think they've done an atrocious job, but I'm addicted. <laughs> um, I have all my stuff on there. Um, centralized. They're bringing they're bringing an education. Bitcoin is up for a reason. They're bringing the masses. They're showing that this is real market. This is kind of like when the web was still viewed as kiddie you know, playground for technologists because AOL was so slow and that was kind of for dummies and then you yeah. had the web, World Wide Web. So when that hit, that same arguments went down, right? This has been a crypto thing that's been on for years. But with Facebook coming in, it really legitimizes that, wow, if you bring two billion people to the party, exactly, a lot of yeah, good yeah. stuff yeah, I'm could happen. About it too. Yeah. Now, the critics of Facebook is they basically copied um, Hashgraph kind of uh, yeah. model, and there's no way they're going to get it through because the world's not going to let Facebook run, run commerce and currency. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like, and they don't do it well anyway. Yeah. Right? So I think it's going to be a game-changing, market-making move. I think they'll have a play in there, but I, don't, I think Facebook's not going to have a global currency. Well, it says a lot that you can get 100 companies to put up 10, 10 million the each. The consortium right? is yeah, yeah. already the first accomplishment. They don't need, so, they don't need any more money, no, we need the money. Yeah, but, <laughs> Give it but, to us. But still the power, yeah you know? right, but that power of that ecosystem, to me, yeah. I was, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of this because I think it gives credibility, so many companies get, get interested in it, and you know, I'm yeah. not sure exactly what's going to come out of it, it's interesting that you know Bitcoin's up. Everybody said, "Oh, sell your Bitcoin." I'm like, yeah. "No, no, <laughs> this is this is premature." Well, I so. think I think open is going to always win. If you look at, um, even though the web's kind of one example of kind of the maturity argument, I think the real analog for me, at least my generation, Val, you probably relate to this, Dave, as you as well. Ed might be, you know, I haven't been born yet. Maybe you are, right? but you know, <laughs> TCP/IP came after SNA, which IBM owned the protocol That's stack. Right. DECnet was the largest network at that time, too. Novell, both proprietary, the small businesses, yeah, yeah. Well, Novell was LAN, all three proprietary network operating systems. So proprietary NOSs decimated by TCP IP. 
So to me, I think even if Facebook does go in there, they are, will recognize that if, unless well, they stay open, and I think open will always win. I think, I think this is the beginning of the death of the closed platform. Yeah, well, I think they're forced to. I think they have to open it up because if they don't open up, people won't trust them and people won't use them. And then for blockchain, if you don't have a community behind it, there will be nothing. Well, so the thing about the crypto spring, and everybody goes like the crypto winter, but, but to your point, TCP IP, HTTP, DNS, SMTP, those were government funded or yeah. academic funded uh, uh, protocols, and people stopped spending money on them. And then the big internet companies just co-opted, that's what Gmail's built on. Well, so, I have always so, said so, Facebook. But, but, but let me finish the thought is, all this crypto money that came in, drove innovation. Yeah. So yeah. you're seeing you know, this new internet emerge, and I yeah. think it's, it's real. I think people you know, sort of overlook a lot of the innovation that's coming. I, I've always said, Dave, that Facebook is what the web would look like if Tim Berners-Lee took venture yeah. financing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. because what they had at that time was a browser and the way to stand up websites for self-service information. They kept it open and it thrived. Facebook became basically the web's version of AOL. Uh, LinkedIn does the same. Twitter has open, but they have no developer community. So, yeah, I think Twitter's the only company, in my opinion, that actually does a good job opening up their data. Now they charge you for it to get their earnings up, but we still haven't. And crypto's the only community that's entire ethos is based upon openness. Yep. And community, you mentioned yes. community. And, and that is a key word. And traditional media will, of course, focus on you know, the bad stuff that happens. But you know, those of us in the business who, who pay attention to it see there's a lot of goodness too. There's a lot of mission driven, a lot of openness, and it's a model for innovation. What do you guys think about the narrative now to break up big tech? You know, you're hearing you know, Facebook, yeah. Amazon, Google coming under fire. What, what are your thoughts on that? So I wrote a blog that maybe was ahead of its time about 18 months ago. It was coincided with Ginny Rometty at Davos in 2018, not 2019, talking about data responsibility. The reason we're having this conversation is that the tech industry by and large, and especially the FANG stocks or whatever we're calling them now, have been irresponsible with our data. The backlash is palpable in Europe, it's law in Europe. The backlash we knew was going to start at the state level here. There's already ahead of my personal schedule, federal discussions, FTC, DOJ as of a couple weeks ago. So it's inevitable that this sort of tech reckoning is coming and more responsibility is going to have to be demonstrated by all the custodians of our data and that's why we're positioning Chainkit as a chain of custody as a service to demonstrate to your regulators, your customers, your partners, suppliers, you know, transparency, irrefutable transparency using blockchain for how you're handling data. You know, if you don't have that transparency and you can't prove it, we're back to the same old discussions, we're back to you know, uninformed old legislators making you know, internet as tubes type regulation and laws. So here, here, and, and you know, DOJ, you could argue that, that they were maybe too slow to, to respond to Microsoft back in the 90s. Um, I'm not sure breaking up big tech is the right thing because I think it's almost like AT&T, that little techs will become big yeah. techs again. Right. Uh, but, they should not be uh, breaking the law. I, I think yeah. there's a, the, re, the reason why is there's actually a limitation of what is possible in technology. Because they understand, and also Facebook understands as well, is that it's actually very, very hard to have data that's owned by your customers, but you are the one who's actually keeping track of everything, and you are the one who's using the data, right? It's, a, it's like a no win. Because uh, if you think about encryption, cryptography, yes, you can make the data encrypted, that way the customer has the key, they control it. But they then Facebook can offer the services. So now you have the Congress thinking, well if there's no technological way of doing this, what can you do in a legal perspective, on a, you know, on a law perspective, how do you make it so that the customer actually own the data? We actually think that is a perfect reason why you have to actually, Facebook actually technically should be built on our platform because we actually allow them to have the data that's encrypted and still be able to do operations on the data if the customer give them the permission to do so. And I think that's the perfect word, uh, way to go forward. And I think blockchain is the fundamental thing that's bringing everybody together in a way that actually benefits everyone else. Ed, take a minute to explain Strong Salt, your project. What's it about? What's the mission? Where are you guys so, at? Uh, so we see Strong Salt as actually privacy first. We literally are building a platform where developers, including Facebook, LinkedIn, Salesforce, can actually build on top of a platform, right? So what happens when you do this is that they actually give the data um, governance to the customers. The customers actually own the data, but because of our cryptography, the, they actually can offer services to the customers when the customer allows them to do so. For example, we have something called searchable encryption. Allows you to encrypt the data 
and still be able to search and operate on the data without decrypting the data first. By giving this power to developers and also the community, then you can have apps that you currently use, but they're not hard to use, they're frictionless, and still offer the same service that Facebook or Salesforce offers the servers. So they can do some discovery on it. You can do you things. Can do some programmability around right, data. Exactly, even though the data is encrypted, but the customer owns the data. Uh -huh. So the customer has to give them permission to do so, right? Those are, um, and we actually, in fact, launched the first app that, as I told you, it's called Strong Vault. You can download it on iOS or Android, and you can actually see the blockchain at play. Literally, you can see the blockchain in your fingerprint, I mean, finger, uh, fingertip to see what happens to your data. You see everything that happens uh, when you share a file or you open a file or something like this. Well, congratulations, Val. Give a quick plug for your project, Chain Kit. I see the new branding there, like it. Pencil Data, where are you on your project? So after nine months of hard selling, we're finding out what customers are actually paying for right now. In our case, it's hardening their apps, their data, and their logs, and wrapping a chain of custody around those things. And the use case at a security conference like this is actually quite existential when you think about it. One of the things that the industry doesn't talk enough about is that every attack we read about in the headlines was through a privilege escalation, so the attacker somehow hacked your web server, managed to get administrative credentials and network or domain administrative credentials, and here's what professional attackers do once they have godlike authority on your network. They identify all the installed security solutions, and they make themselves invisible because they can. After that, they operate with impunity. Our technology, the security use case that we're seeing a lot of traction is, is we can detect that. We're applying blockchain, we're agnostic, so bring your own blockchain in our case. Yep. But we're able to- Is ChainKit um, a product? Is it a development environment? It's a globally what? available service, hosted service. on AWS, RESTful APIs, and fundamentally, we're enabling developers to harden their apps, to, to wrap a chain of custody around key data or logs in their apps, so that when the attackers attempt to leverage that administrative authority, and tamper with logs, tamper with so the So it's stakes. a service, not a, pro, a software it's download. A, it's, a pla it's a developer oriented service. But this uh, is one of the biggest problems and challenges of security today, is you see the stat, yeah. after you get infiltrated it takes 250 or 300 days yeah. to even detect. And I have not heard that number shrink. I've heard people aspire to yeah. that number shrinking. This we, we can get it down to real time. Problem. Yeah. Real tip of the spear I mean, on any huge. attack. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so that's what we're excited to be here. We're yeah. excited to talk about one of the dirty secrets of the security industry is that it shouldn't take a year to detect <laughs> an advanced attack. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE and sharing your insight. Congratulations on your project, Ed. Val, great to see you. Likewise, and thanks yeah, to SPJ thanks. for having us on here, and we're looking forward to coming back, right. and yeah. we appreciate the Absolutely. opportunity. Thanks, thanks for guys. SPJ, Cube, and thanks for you guys The CUBE is always well. paying it forward. Of course, really the most important conversation in security is going to be a blockchain type of implementation. This is a reality that's coming very soon, but we're here at AWS Reinforce talking about the first conference with Amazon Web Services dedicated to CISOs, CIOs around security. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Stay with us for more coverage after this short break. My name is Dave.